Welcome back, Gray Man. Today we're going to be going through some of the footage released by IGN showing 23 full minutes of Gray Zone Warfare gameplay. Now, everyone and their brother and sister and grandmother have already talked about this, but unfortunately, life happens for me and I couldn't get to it until today. So here we are talking about it. But the real treat here is in a couple of days. I'll be releasing my footage of the game after we had an insider play test the other day. So what you see here is something I've actually already got my hands on. Subscribe and turn on that bell if you want to see that on Friday. But for now, instead of breaking down the trailer, I want to point out nine little details that you may have missed in the Gray Zone Warfare gameplay trailer. A little attention to detail can go a long way in gaming. Now, I've got a list of nine here, but to be honest, it is way more than nine. I just scrunch a bunch together into one sometimes, and I, I just, I never really learn to count. So take that for what it's worth. So let's jump right into it here. Number one, other than being incredibly beautiful to look at, the game offers a ton of ambient sounds and audio cues during the gameplay. Here are just a few little details at the beginning of the gameplay, and you'll notice here that as they move through the different terrains, you'll hear the different ambient sounds start, such as this clip where you're approaching the wooded area, and then you start hearing those obnoxious frogs. Not only that, but as you move through some of the more dense foliage, you'll hear them brush against the leaves. Now, if you played Tarkov, you are used to this, but it is not quite as obnoxious as what you'd hear in Tarkov. But I personally think that's a good thing. Also, as you approach an enemy here that's aware of your presence, you'll get verbally accosted. Number two. While the audio is important to gaming, the visuals are probably a little bit more important, at least in my opinion. Now, there's no mistake in the game is beautiful. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. The greenery, the shrubbery, the dense forests, it all looks fantastic, okay? We can get that out of the way. But on top of that, you'll see some visual enhancements during this gameplay as well, including the use of free look, which as a creator, this is fantastic to me because it helps me create thumbnails. But more importantly, when it comes to gameplay, you'll see a suppression mechanic. As you can see by this clip, your vision is blurred past a certain point. In my opinion, suppression is going to be vital in this game, especially when it comes to those PVP interactions. If you're getting accurate return fire while you're firing, it's going to be two blurred screens trying to hit each other, and that could be a lot of fun. So definitely, definitely use that suppression mechanic in your favor. Number three, to expand on this a little bit more, you see a moment early on where the character gets hit by the AI. There are several things you'll notice about this. First, you'll see the effect of blood everywhere on the screen, so that's a visual indicator that things are going wrong. You'll also notice at the top left, you'll see some symbols that will show your health status after being hit, including where you're injured. And then of course there's the beautiful healing animation. Now, number four, since we've seen our first injury, it's worth noting that there are audio cues to know when your buddy is hurt as well. You'll notice as gamers are gaming together here, you'll hear some heavy breathing. And while you may think that it's because your friend is super impressed with your gameplay, it's actually because he's injured. It also appears you're able to get a better understanding of what's going on with him when you assess him with this pop-up menu here that shows that you can examine your teammate. Number five, now in this gameplay session, they show briefly the menu and inventory screen. We initially see the map, which we'll talk about that in a bit, but we also see at the top character and tasks, as well as your level in the top right. Then when it comes to your inventory, you've got the typical Tarkov style loadout, helmet, mask, eyewear, ear pro, plate carrier, primary, secondary, a safe box, very similar to Tarkov in that regard. But when it comes to health, you've got a few different systems. You've got your energy, hydration, and weight, which is normal, but you've also got your blood levels, which you can see here, they utilize a blood pack to improve this. And then you've got your intoxication levels and radiation levels. These add a whole new level of survival, unlike Tarkov. So it'll be interesting to see what types of scenarios bring these up and what types of healing and buffs counteract these. Number six. 
Like I said, we get a glimpse of the map a couple times. So let's take a look here at the map and you can see several different things. You can see three different landing zones toward the end of the scenario. At the beginning, they arrived at this one. You've also got the ability to head back to your base from here, which is what they happen to do once they hop onto the helicopter at the end. So you've got a very large area here. It's a pretty decent sized town. And this is just a small portion of the map. I'll talk a little bit more about that on Friday, but there's some information here that you can glean. Number seven, let's talk weapons and ballistics a bit. There are several things to note throughout the gameplay when it comes to these things. Let's start with the weapon manipulations because this is always one of my favorite things in video games. First and foremost, you're going to be able to select a fire mode as seen here, which this is available in most games now anyway, but it's still worth noting. You also have the opportunity to check your magazine capacity and you can see that there are going to be several different types of ammo in this game. Likely not gonna be as in depth as Tarkov because that's just ridiculous, way too much to worry about, but the rounds available are gonna have their own ballistics. Which brings me to that. There's one moment while the gamer here is shooting at an enemy. You'll see he's having difficulty landing shots because the fence is in the way, and you'll see he has to move around a little bit to land those accurate shots and neutralize the enemy. So while you can shoot through objects, the ammo type and the type of object you're trying to shoot through are going to play a role. They released a devlog on this a little while ago. It's very in-depth. Also, a little bit later, it appears they're shoulder swapping. So that's a cool mechanic that isn't available in a whole lot of games. I know Tarkov just added it, but those kind of realistic features are pretty awesome. Moving on to number eight. At one point, you see that discovering a new location unlocks experience points. This is connected to the level in the menu, I'm sure, but it's something that hasn't really been discussed. Which brings about the question, what does experience actually do? Do I unlock new gear with this? Do I unlock sections of the map? Do I have more health this way? What can I do with these experience points? What am I actually unlocking here when I do this? So obviously there's some sort of incentive to explore the map and find these locations. We'll just have to see what those are. And then we save the best for last. Number nine, you can kick doors in. That is never not going to be cool, and I'm going to be doing it a lot. You're certainly going to be making a lot of noise, so any AI in the area are probably going to discover you, but who doesn't want to kick in a door? All right, gamers, thank you so much for sticking around here. I am so excited to get into this game. I'm so excited to share more with you, to give my opinions on it, to share how the game actually works. But I got to keep that on the DL, you know, on the down low for a couple more days anyway. But again, thank you. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end here. It really helps me know that what I'm creating actually isn't super boring. If you didn't like it and you're still around here, why? <laughs> Everybody have a great day. I'll see you in a couple days. Until the next one, be bold, be courageous, stay gray.